In this video, I'm going to show teachers how to sign up for a free Zoom account and host office hours and teach lessons using Zoom. So I just search free Zoom for teachers, click this first link on the Zoom blog, and you're going to need to scroll kind of far down because they've done a lot of updating on this blog post. So you're going to click free Zoom account and it's going to take you um, to this website or something like this website. There's actually this one too, where you have to sign up for a basic account there um, and then also enter your school information. Um, so you're going to sign up. Once you sign up, they're going to send you a link. They're going to ask you to activate your Zoom account and they'll send you a link and you'll click the link. And the link will actually um, take you to a page that says start your first meeting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sign in and show you what the inside looks like. OK, so uh, this is what the inside of your Zoom account will look like. Uh, over here, you'll see a, a link to your profile. And what you want to click is meetings. So you're going to click meetings. And actually, when you verify your account, there's going to be a big button that says um, start your first meeting. This is the same thing. So you click schedule a new meeting and you're going to call your meeting, whatever you want, uh, office hours or whatever lesson you're teaching that day. Um, you can even describe it. You pick a date, you pick a time, you can make it recurring. If it's recurring, the same link will work over and over again. Um, just leave all of this the way it is. I wouldn't require a meeting password. This is important to leave um, the video off for the host and the participants, and you'll see why that's important in a minute. Um, you can just leave this as both. And you can also enable a waiting room because the link won't work until you click start the meeting. So a waiting room is a good, it just allows students to sit there and it'll tell you that the host hasn't started the meeting yet and they'll, that the meeting will start soon. Um, and then I also recommend recording the meeting automatically. You can also leave that unchecked and still record the meeting and I can show you how to do that in this video. But recording is good because kids who don't make it live that they can watch the replay and you can actually send, um, you can upload it to YouTube. You could uh, upload it to your Google Classroom if you wanted. If you upload it to YouTube, you can just give them the link in Google Classroom. You can email the, the video file to students, but that might take a while if the video is really long. Okay, so I'm gonna just go ahead and click Save here. And now my meeting has been saved. And this is actually the URL to join the meeting. And this is what you're gonna give students. So you click Copy the Invitation, Copy Meeting Invitation, and you can email this to students. You can put it in Google Classroom. Um, and students will just click it and it'll automatically, once the time um, that you picked for the meeting uh, arrives, they click the, and you click start the meeting, students will be able to click this, the link and get into the meeting. So I'm going to go ahead and click start the meeting so you can see what this looks like. So this is what it looks like when you start the meeting. You're going to click, click open Zoom and it's launching. I recommend that you test your speaker and microphone uh, before you click clicking join with computer. That's important just to make sure everything's working. Uh, notice that it says start video. This is a red line here. That's just to show your face. So the reason it's the line is there is because I clicked don't start video automatically when I first set up the meeting. So I'm just going to click join with computer audio because I know that it works. I've already tested my microphone. Um, and so now the meeting has started and you can see the participants here uh, and I'm going to go ahead and click start video and you'll be able to see my face. Um, and so this is what it will look like for for um, students. They'll be able to see me. Um, I can click here to take my face off. Uh, students can chat by clicking here and um, you can even upload files here. And notice it says to everyone. If students click this little thing, they can actually just um, chat with you if they clicked, click host only, or if they um, click um, everyone publicly. You can also chat privately. Students can chat privately with each other. Um, 
and I don't think there's a way to turn this off. There might be, um, but they can just, you know, type and ask questions right there. Um, there's other features that are really awesome when it comes to Zoom. So notice that it, there's a record button here so I can record this and it'll start recording. I can pause it and stop it. Um, and then if I click this button share, um, so one participant can share at a time, that's good. There's advanced sharing options. I'm not gonna go over that right now, but if I click share here, um, I can share, my, my students will be able to see my desktop if I click this. They'll be able to see a whiteboard if I click this. Um, this is a little more advanced, so I'm not gonna talk about those. But, um, but if I click whiteboard and click share, then students will be able to see a whiteboard and I can draw on it. Um, I can type things, like I, if I'm trying to teach them how to make an outline, I can type here, uh, which is really cool. Um, there's all sorts of stuff you can do. I can clear all drawings and start over. Um, I can save whatever I type here to my computer. So there's all sorts of really cool features here. Um, to get out of this, I just click stop share and then it'll go back to my original um, screen. Um, and let's see, let's see the advanced sharing. So you could put only host, which I recommend when you're working with students here. So only this, the host can share their screen. Um, and then let's see, here are the participants. So you can also, when you click participants, you can mute all the participants by clicking this and it'll mute everyone. Um, you can also unclick allow participants to unmute themselves. And you might want to do that with kids because kids might interrupt your lesson. So, you know, click that button, allow participants to rename themselves. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> um, lock meeting. I am not sure what that does. I'm going to have to, okay, no new attendees can join this meeting once locked. Okay, I wouldn't do that because students can join anytime, right? Um, so there's all sorts of fun stuff here that you can um, that you can mess around with. And yeah, I highly recommend Zoom. It's, it's a pretty easy program to use. Uh, I'm going to stop. Well, I'm going to click in meeting and show you what it, how you can download this to your computer. So I'm just going to go ahead and click end meeting End meeting for all. And then what's going to happen is it's going to um, convert the recording and it's going to ask me where I want to save the recording. It automatically goes to documents, um, but you can click choose new location and you can pick anywhere on your computer that you want it to save. So I'll click choose new location. Um, and then I want to save it to my desktop. So I'll say choose and then save. And then there it is. So there's the audio only. And then this is what you want to give students the MP4. Um, I'm not quite sure what the playback is. And then the chat will also download if anyone typed anything in the chat. There'll be a chat file too, which is pretty cool. So you can see what everyone was saying during your meeting and the questions and things that people were we're asking. So a uh, pretty awesome tool for teachers to, to, to continue their teaching um, during this crazy pandemic.